All right, in this video, we're gonna talk about using Companion for ETC EOS software. Uh, this software by Bitfocus, it's a third party company, bitfocus.io slash companion, and it works natively with Stream Deck, so it works great if you have a Stream Deck, but you don't even need a Stream Deck. It can run directly off of a computer, um, or you can connect it to it remotely using your phone or your tablet or whatever, but it runs locally on a PC or a Mac or a Linux system, and then can remotely control network devices like ETC EOS, using OSC commands. From here, um, you simply need to download the software. So we can click here on download. And then you do need to create an account. It is a free account. They don't spam you or anything, but go ahead and log in and uh, create an account here for you. Once you've created an account, now they have lots of different options, including running it on a Pi, but I'm just gonna click here on the regular companion. And then from here, I'll click download. And then I'll download the latest version. I always choose the stable ones. We're running a much older one you'll see here, but you can download it and install it just like you do any other program. From there, once the program launches, there'll be a system tray icon that you'll click on. And from there, you can click launch it. It brings you to a web interface. Here's an example of our web interface. We've got it tied into a whole bunch of different things, but here you'll see the ETC EOS. Um, and to start off, you'll need to find it. So under add connections here, I'll just type in EOS. You'll see the ETC EOS and I'll simply click add and you'll see it adds a new instance down here. I'll delete that one since that's a duplicate here. You'll see the one we have already installed. I'll click edit and you'll see that we have simply the label. This is a label that's meaningful to you. I believe that's the default name. The target is the IP address of your console or your Nomad primary. And then the user ID, which you want to connect as, you can connect as user one or a different user if you're using multiple users, but the default is one. In there, I'll show you some of the buttons that we use. Um, so for example, here for, well, let's go. We had a question regarding macros. So on my fourth page here, I can click on lighting startup and you'll see that it is simply, that's the name, the logical name you saw we set up earlier and the command is run macro and we're running macro 9900. To add a new button, I just click browse. These are all of the plugins I've got set up, so I'll choose that ETC EOS. And then here are all the options, and depending on which version you have, you may have even more options than this in the newer versions, but I'm simply gonna click run macro and click add. And I'll click done, so you see it's added that, and I can enter a macro number that whenever I push that button, it actually triggers that macro. And you can also trigger a delay, so if you have more than one macro or one, more than one thing happening at the same time. There's options for your press action versus a release action, so that happens when you let go of the button. Feedback is feedback letting you know uh, something about when an uh, action has taken. You can set font, color, background, all that stuff. You also have this concept of variables, and when I click on variables and I click here on ETC EOS, these are variable names that you can put in the string that will uh, make, uh, that can change the labeling. So let me give you an example here. Go one here isn't just the word go, but it's got this dollar sign and that, that information. And so if you go under variables, you can see where we're pulling that. And so that, what that's doing is it's grabbing the uh, next queue number and the next Q label. And I guess it's pretty intuitive here where it says Q number pending or Q pending number and Q active uh, intensity. Those are what's set to display there. Um, and so you can use this as well, but here I've got a lighting startup and shutdown, ghost light on and off. We have a prayer light that comes on and off, LED work lights. Uh, those are light work lights specifically over the LED wall uh, when we need to do work on that. Uh, preheat fixtures and home faders, and all of these are doing are just firing macros. But the neat thing too is that you can use this to trigger more than simply um, simply that. Here we're using these to trigger queues, so we can run a queue, a queue list, and a queue number. Um, and I'm not sure I've got any examples at the moment here. Um, but sometimes what we'll do is we'll actually have a button that triggers multiple things. So it will trigger lighting and audio or lighting and video or anything like that. And so the neat thing is that with a single button press, you can sequence out more than just one thing. Okay, we'll show you on the ETC side how that is set up as well. Here under settings, I'll go under system, show control, and then under OSC, we need to make sure that RX is enabled, so that's receive. 
uh, IF port set to 8000. And that's all that needs to be set on this side of things to receive the show controls. Uh, what I'll show you here is let me hop out of this real quick, back into live. So what you can see here is that if this is hooked up to your Stream Deck, obviously you can press your Stream Deck buttons to make it trigger. They've also got this, what's called emulator. So there, it looks just like a Stream Deck. And so as I press buttons on here, um, I can sit here and press go here and you can see that it actually advances the cues um, or I can go back and then to show you. And so now as I see, as I hit lighting startup, Actually, we have it change magic sheets and stuff like that as well. It kind of sets up the screen. Uh, but here on park, it sets all of our park values there. If I go back, you'll see that as I bring ghost lights on, you can see park channels come in and out. So ghost lights, prayer lights, LED work lights. Uh, I have a preheat. heat The preheat one actually uh, brings up submasters. So if we bring up our virtual faders, you can see that we've got some values set in there. And then now when I go back and I click home faders, you can see that those all sneak out. Okay, I'm gonna go through a couple of those macros of those fire here so you can just see them. Uh, our startup macro is pretty advanced, um, contains a lot. It fires a snapshot, it sets a submaster, which in this case is our house lights. It sneaks to full at a time of three, uh, goes to queue out and then it triggers other macros. It sets uh, 700 at uh, full park, and it wakes up uh, some fixtures, and it sets some more park values, kind of sets the default light for backstage and some ramps and some other utility areas, um, and uh, triggers stuff like that. Um, uh, compared ghost light on and off is probably a good example of here, just for setting uh, that uh, 417 at seven park and 407 at 15 park for our ghost lights on and there's our ghost light out. It takes those and it clears their park value. Uh, per lights, same sort of thing. We're sneaking values in and out. Um, and then I'll show you our shutdown macro here. So 700 parks so that removes the park value. And since it's normally not used anywhere except through park, it basically sets it to zero and it comes out. 407 goes to 75%, 414 goes to 50%, 504 goes to 40%. And these are just various lights that are left on from ghost lights to ramp lights to backstage access lights. Um, and then shut down our fixtures. It, takes a couple of other macros, which turns the ghost light on and makes sure the prayer lights are off. It takes sub, uh, this is kind of a neat one. We take sub 10, which is our house lights to full. Um, and then we go to queue out so that we've got house lights, but no queue. And then we have a macro weight and we progressively just take uh, Submaster 10 all the way out. So it goes a wait time of one. So it waits a second, goes down to 80%. It waits 160 seconds and then takes a slow 30 second fade all the way out. Um, and then it takes snapshot nine, which is kind of a pseudo uh, lock screen and then sub 10 through home. Uh, so it's going to take all of the submasters and home those values. And then it also takes this macro 9912, which takes the LED work lights off if they were set on. Hopefully that gives you an idea of some of the things that you can do with the Stream Deck.